It's time for us to go through the pages of National Daily. So we call it Off the Press. Tunde Kola Wale joins us this morning. Tunde, many thanks for joining us and compliment of the season. Yeah, the Very well, thank you. Uh, let's, uh, Kofi is actually here, by the way, and uh, we'll do this together. We'll start off with the leadership newspaper on the leadership. NIPC snores as Nigeria loses more investment opportunities. It's boldly written on the leadership newspaper today. Underneath, Uma's action grant commission to halt. Executive Secretary keeps Moom over mountain allegations. That's what you find. 2023, federal government counters no achievement claimed by opposition. Well, it's expected. With drought limit, lawmakers refuse to shift grounds. Bajabi Amila meets President Muhammad Buhari. Again, you find Atiku saying, I'll reopen all borders to boost economy. Chinubu intervenes in Cross River APC crisis. <laughs> Kofi's, you know, uh, home. Well, uh, we just uh, move away, just before we move away quickly from the leadership, another paper talks about flight delays, cancellation, loom over jet A1 scarcity. That's what the airlines are saying. It's probably not just going to be that December that a lot of people anticipate. It's going to be very dramatic, very stressful, uh, because when you talk about the unavailability of Jet A1, then you understand what it is. After conviction, Okukwe quits as OB Dati campaign DG. It's uh, <laughs> a lot. Well, that, that's so much we can take this morning on the leadership newspaper. On his front page, um, the first one, the big one there, uh, cash limits, uh, reps order CBN to stay action, banks adamant. Uh, several writers are going to all that uh, right now, maybe later. But um, more from the punch, Governor's FG agree on NIPPS sale to fund budgets. NIPPS sale to fund, uh, or NIPP's sale rather, NIPP sale to fund budget. Um, Buhari transmits finance bill. Nas passes budget Thursday. Uh, maybe that's one of the pluses for him that his budget has always been on time, uh, as compared to what was there before he came on board. Germany begins return of 1,130 looted Benin bronzes. I hope that our people here will not burn them and say they are fetish items. You know, <laughs> uh, let's go. Heineck needs 100,000 vehicles, 4,200. Boats, Yakubu, truck driver kills tricycle rider uh, who loves loot rice. A very unfortunate uh, uh, situation with those riding on our roads, uh, be trucks or uh, uh, tricycles or bicycles. Uh, NIF, NFIU stops cash withdrawal from FG state's account. Uh, some stories on the front page uh, of the punch. Well, let's um, quickly take a look at this day newspaper. Cash policy, can others express concern over plot to arrest Emefili? So Emefili, um, if you look at, you know, Twitter, if you go on social media, his topping uh, the conversation, the top trending conversation on Twitter, you have Emefili. If you don't see Emefili, the CBN governor. First, that um, he has to be in front of, you know, the House of Rep had summoned him and he wasn't able to, you know, be available. And secondly, this issue of him being arrest that court order uh, DSS and all of that. Well, we'll definitely uh, wait to hear our guests' uh, thoughts on this. Says, selfish Nigerians want to create confusion in the country. Bullion van politicians after CBN, says Atiko Koa campaign. Lawmakers re-invite Emefili for grilling on cash policy tomorrow. Falana, other senior lawyers react. And you see another uh, writer says, money launders politician or political bandit against redesign of Naira, says uh, Nance. Policy will allow voters elect credible leaders, says ex Quara governor. And just before we move away from this day newspaper, Buhari, federal government generated $547 million from 5G spectrum auction. And... Uh, Obasaki signed 321.4 billion naira 2023 appropriation bill into law. And Buhari Bajabi Amila meet over the 
rising election violence dispute over cash policy. Well, this is some of the headlines we're able to take this morning on this day newspaper. The nation has the lead story, Tinubu. Uh, the nation has the lead story, Tinubu unveils funding plan uh, for infrastructure revolution. More from the paper, uh, CBN releases security features of new Naira notes. Governor's OK plan to sell off five power plants. Okupe quits as Obi's campaign DG, LP candidate lists priorities. Shema Kamp, uh, PDP leaders Sean Atiku's Katsina rally. Uh, well, that rally was really, really uh, well attended. I uh, saw so some videos being shared by the Atiku team online. Um, we have more from the punch. Jam fixes April 29 next year for UTME. Uh, for $242 million Japanese loan for Lagos Ogun. Um, Governor's OK plan to sell off five power plants. Federal government eyes $260 billion naira from sale of Geregu, Ajokuta, others. I don't know, people are, are, are not tired of hearing these names. Senate confirms Zonoche, Ogumola, 11 others for NDDC board. Congratulations to, to them, especially uh, Loretta Onoche. Um, very interesting one. Let, let's uh, bring in to Nicola Wale at this time. Uh, I, I, Mr. Follow, I want to look at the to speak about or speak on the whole situation with the uh, uh, the governor of I'm Central Bank. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, I've been calling. Uh, I've not been hearing what you're saying. I've been calling the studio, they are not responding. Okay. I've not been hearing what you're saying. Oh, oh that, that's that's unfortunate. Um, maybe Messi can ask you the first question while we sort that out. Uh, I don't know if can you hear Messi, sir? I can hear you. Oh my, oh my. All right, so is it okay? We to reach the studio. No, no response from there. Stop. Okay, Mr. Kwalawa, is, is it, is it, is, can you faintly hear us, please? You can? Okay, we, we'll try to sort that out. Um, yeah. Uh, so but, can you hear us? Yeah, faintly, but not too clearly. I'm not too audible. Okay, what are your thoughts on the, on the, the, um, the, the the attempt if you can hear me sir to um, uh, gain a court an ex parte uh, order to arrest the the cbn governor i'm sure you may have gone through the details or some excerpts of the the judgment yes, well, uh, yes uh, most times and all the time you find out that people belong to the executive arm of government they have no respect for the other branches of government, such as the judiciary and the legislator. The legislator, for example, would request that someone in the executive of government should come and appear before them, and then they will shun it. Sometimes, too, the people in the security, the police and the PSS, the legislator and the... Um, the judiciary will ask them to appear, and they will not go. You and I will remember that uh, not too long ago, a court convicted the IT of police for contempt, even though that order has been uh, lifted. It's uh, a part of what we call in law executive uh, rascality. There is no branch of um, governance whether it's the executive or the legislature or the judiciary, that is higher than the other. But in our own climb, the people in the executive arm of government always believe that they are superior to the people in the legislature and the judiciary. So with regards to the MFLA, once you have been summoned by the National Assembly, the owner lies on you, or it behoves on you, to appear not just as a matter of law, but also as a matter of respect. I've said it times without number that the legislature is the supreme organ of the Nigerian nation. They are elected to represent their people, to do oversight function, and also make laws for good governance of the country. So that is not a branch of governance that we neglect. And then the National Assembly they are the ones who are bosses 
to Mr. President, to the Vice President, and all other people who work under them. So nobody in the sector of government, whether you be CBN governor, whether you be IG of police, or whether you be army chief, or whether you be director general of the DSS, that you will refuse to appear before the legislature or to appear before the court when you are asked to do so. I think the <clears throat> uh, order that has been made for Mephele to appear is in good stead. And if I was the, um, the governor of Central Bank, I will quickly run and answer that summon with apologies. Tunde Kola, uh, let's talk about the issue of uh, flight cancellation. It's been uh, projected, it's suspected that uh, Nigerians should anticipate flight cancellation because of uh, the scarcity of Jet A1. What are your thoughts at this point? Don't you think that we should have been able to, you know, put our acts together, get over all of this fuel scarcity uh, at this particular time and period of the year? Please repeat that again. So on the leadership newspaper, uh, the leadership talks about the fuel scarcity and uh, the fact that there's a possibility that flights will be cancelled because of this unavailability of Jet A1. I'd like to share your thoughts as a country. Should we not um, be above all of this, putting our acts together, overcoming all of this fuel scarcity saga? If I had you a little bit, I would say you are talking about aviation fuel, is it? Yes, please. Okay, okay. And you know, some time back we have discussed that uh, on this our station before, in which I made mention of the fact that in the whole of West Africa, and also most part of Africa, aviation fuel is the most aviation fuel in Nigeria is the most expensive even though we are supposed to be an aviation or a petroleum-producing um, uh, country, you also know, too, apart from aviation fuel, that Nigeria doesn't have a standard anger for the maintenance and repair of aircraft. Whereas, we have the largest number of individuals who have private jets in the country. And um, the number of airlines that we also do have when you compare to some other African countries, it's a substantial number. But most of the foundation that we are supposed to lay in terms of people producing the patient fuel in Nigeria, in terms of having an uh, anger for maintenance of aircraft and their repairs and all that, we have never bothered to do that. A tiny country like Ethiopia depends on its airline and the coffee that they produce to run that country. They have no other mineral resources apart from the coffee and the well-organized aviation um, uh, industry and the airline that they do have. So, it's um, the scarcity of aviation fuel and the non-availability most of the time and its most expensive nature in West Africa and in Africa is a reflection and a sad reality of uh, the afflictions that we have in most other phases of our life, that we have a country producing this quantity of a petroleum products on a daily, on a yearly, on a monthly basis, and with large number of our airlines having private airlines, yet to find out aviation fuel is not available. So most times people fly to Ghana, they fly to Togo, and some of these other West African countries to buy these things. And that is one of the reasons we find out um, cost of flying in Nigeria, when you look at the distance that we fly, is too prohibitive. If aviation fuel were cheaper, if you could maintain and repair aircraft in Nigeria, I am sure Nigeria wouldn't be spending that much buying tickets to fly around from one portion or from one section of the country to the other. These are areas we require to fix. It's a population of about 200 million in which increasingly, or on an annual basis, more and more people who have the need to fly, especially with the deplorable nature of our roads 
and also the combatants uh, nature of our waterways. Our waterways are not being used. The roads are also bad. And then you also have kidnappers and bandits waiting for you on the road. The safest means of traveling in Nigeria today is by air. But if you are not rich, if you are not comfortable, if you don't have the means, then you cannot fly. All right. Uh, Tunde, thank you. Uh, uh, we move to the next one. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, we can see, as we said earlier, on the front page of um, the, the leadership newspaper, uh, after conviction, Okupe quits as Obi Dati campaign uh, DG. What are your thoughts on this? Some people feel that this um, is not is not telling well of uh, the selection selection argument. Let's call it of a, the uh, political party and in particular the presidential candidate, and that uh, uh, maybe the party should or the candidate should have uh, thought twice before you know picking Okupe as a campaign DG. Well, the party is said through its uh, spokesman Tanko Yunusa yesterday. Uh, that this is um, uh, what he called um, a syndicated attack. You know, the the the, the judgment uh, on Okupe is a syndicated attack uh, on on the Labour Party's presidential candidate ahead of uh, the 2023 election. So, so what what do you say to this, please? Well, uh, it's uh, rather unfortunate that uh, Mr. Adoni Okupe has been convicted uh, court for money laundering. It's uh, a big smear, not just on his reputation, but also on the party, the Labour Party, that he has been working for very lately. But we must not forget that it's the court of first instance that has convicted him. He can see appeal to the court of appeal. He can also go to the Supreme Court. And while he's uh, making all his... Uh, Application to these other higher courts, he can apply for a stay of execution uh, on compassionate grounds. I'm also aware that uh, Mr. Tony Okupe is not enjoying the best of health uh, lately. As regards uh, the implication on the Labour Party, I don't think that uh, Mr. Okupe is directly or deliberately targeted. For this conviction, you and I will know that that case has been going on for long, ever before he was appointed as director general of uh, the campaign organization of Mr. Ubi. So let's keep our fingers crossed and see what the Court of Appeal or the Supreme Court would eventually say with regard to its conviction. But you don't forget. There are so many of them that are standing trial with regard to some of the money they were said to have gotten from Konesambo Dazuki, which was a superior, I mean, which was uh, said to be meant for security, to buy arms and ammunition. But uh, Mr. Dazuki was alleged to have uh, shared some of those money, gave some of those money to politicians for political purposes. So, the interesting aspect of this is that uh, the man who gave out the money himself is still working free, has not been convicted. Whereas those who got just a little portion of the money is now um, to go to jail. The lesson to be learned from all this is that uh, we must learn to do things in a very proper manner. Vote for money we are marked for certain purposes. Uh, Tunde Kola, Wale, let's move away from that uh, to, to another paper. Tunde, let's uh, take a quick look at this day newspaper. talks about cash policy. Can others express concern over the plot to arrest Emefili? I'm sure that you're very abreast with that situation. Uh, th they have actually, uh, the expression, you know, goes as... Uh, Selfish Nigerians wants to create confusion in the country. Others say bullion van politicians after the CBN. That's what the Atiko Core campaign is quoted to say. But what are your thoughts on this? That's the first. And what do you think is best practice? Especially in the case of when someone is being accused of accusation, 
uh, there's a, a pending court case and what have you. What, what's the best practice? For instance, in the case of uh, Okupe, just like you have mentioned, it's something that's been ongoing for a while. Is it rational for these persons to continue to occupy public offices and also be appointed by a different organization, whether private or government organization, as it were? When you know, when you look at the Nigerian constitution, I think it's section, is it 33 or 38 or there about? No. I can't remember too clearly. There's what you call presumption of innocence. That until the court of law, the court of competent jurisdiction, says that the man is guilty of whatever charges have been filed against him, he should see and enjoy all the benefits, all the doubts of being innocent until he is convicted. So that is why most times, when people have cases in court, you should not um, rush to condemn them and say that they are no longer fit to hold any public um, uh, office. So that is the... Uh, this argument is predicated on the presumption of innocence for all Nigerians as provided for by the Nigerian constitution. The politicians are also Nigerians, so we should not... Um, take this benefit of doubt or this presumption of innocence away from them. Then, but more importantly, in most other crimes, when people have uh, very egregious uh, allegations pending against them in court of competent jurisdiction, what is morally done, and uh, I underline the word moral, is that such persons who usually, if they have been appointed or if they are occupying a public office, they will, on their own volition, resign or withdraw for long delay. And where they do not withdraw, resign for long delay, the person who has appointed or has given them such appointment will ask them to stand aside pending when they have been able to deal with or have finished or the cases against them in court have been concluded. It's a moral issue, which um, in most uh, civilized societies, people uh, tend to embark upon when circumstances um, arise from there. But it doesn't mean that the person is already guilty of the charges that have been um, filed against them in the court of competent jurisdiction. If uh, I was the one appointing Mr. Okupe. I probably would not have appointed him because of the fact that if at the end of the day, when the campaign has been going on, he is convicted, it will be a stain on, his, uh, on the banner I mean, and then on the party. And also recollect that one person, an army general, was also appointed into the campaign structure of the Labour Party and of Mr. Obi. And when he was, I think it was General Nenche, and the middle of that announcement was made, the Nigerian youth went up in an uproar, condemning the appointment. Kola Wale, and the man um, 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 just before, the campaign. I mean, mm. just a, just a follow-up to that conversation, I'd like to find out, you have said that in other climes is a case of morality, and so... Um, if, you, if you have a case where a senior public official or government official is accusing, most cases they get to step down, you know, they probably put tender letter of resignation, despite the fact that the law of uh, being innocent until being proven by a court of competence jurisdiction is a universal law. I mean, I'm not sure it's limited to just Nigeria. But uh, my question to you is, why is it that that issue of morality seemed to be... Um, you know, gaining upper hand in developed climes as it compared to, you know, Africa and Nigeria. Why is it that that is respected? Nobody brings an argument that, you know, uh, you're innocent until you've been proven guilty by a court of competence jurisdiction. That argument is not usually not there. You find people stepping down. You find, like you rightly stated, no one would rather appoint someone who has a case who has been accused 
or involved in or any sort of criminal activity or whatever it is, whether or not they have been proven guilty, they just take a step backward. So why is it that morality seems to be taking a plus in this you know, part of the world or in this part of the world? Well, uh, morality, it's a universal concept. What is good in Nigeria will also be good in the U.S. and in Germany and in, uh, I mean, uh, Britain. And what is bad in those places will also most likely be bad around here. The challenge we have always had in Nigeria and in Africa is that uh, even though we are supposed to be a moral society, even though the number of churches and the number of mosques that we have around here, when you compare to some of those other countries, they outnumber them. We are a nation of uh, believers, and but more of uh, very ungodly people. So, too many times, when morality is coming to question, we turn to turn a blind eye to it and begin to make uh, some spurious arguments and see that's why we should continue to hang on to power and to hang on to offices. It's the society, the followers, those who vote for people, the taxpayers, who will determine what is uh, to be done when people have the kind of uh, situation of how find themselves in the kind of situations uh, that we are talking about. If the society so decree, or if the society so finds that hey, that look, once we have issues budging on stealing or budging on criminality, you can no longer stay in office, then you will find out most of our allies will begin to find out, will begin to yield to the pressures that are coming from the society. But if the society still continues to hold such persons, People who are having challenges with the law, if they still continue to hold them in high esteem, if they still continue to praise them, if they still continue to patronize them, if they still continue to give them chiefancy titles and war avail, if they still continue to benefit from uh, some of the largest or public funds that they have stolen, then the status quo will, be re will remain. And then morality will not count for nothing in the affairs of our nation. You will recollect that laws, most laws all over the world, have their roots in morality. They have their roots in morality. In fact, it is the morals of society that God essentially codified into law, into the Constitution. And that is why you find out in different parts of the world, their laws are slightly different. In some countries of the world, when you are said to have abused religion, it is called blasphemy. And because of that, you can even be executed for it. All right. Mr. In Kondole, some countries of the yes, thank you yes. so much. Sincere apologies, please, uh, for the interjection. But th thank you very much. We, we have to go. Uh, <laughs> thoroughly enjoy your analysis today, as always, and uh, look forward to having you, as usual, next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We apologize Thank for the you. audio Happy issues. Monday. Thank you very much. Uh, and compliments of the season to you. We apologize for the audio Thank issues you. in the Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, glad. I hope you will send me an elephant for my Christmas. Oh, well. <laughs> we have to check if, if that would not uh, consume money laundering. We'll check and then we'll go back to you. <laughs> all right. We don't want to be in the headlines for the wrong reasons. Thank you to the call, Ole. And I uh, think eventually all. audio issues are fun. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be right back. We'll take a break. When we return, we're looking at uh, safety on our roads in the Yuletide. There's going to be a lot of traveling, including on the, uh, the second Niger Bridge. You won't know what exactly we need to do and what the authorities are saying about being safe. Stay with us. We'll be right back.